Hello, and good evening to all of you good people. My, I am Reverend David Owens, and it is a joy. I have the joy of bringing forth this opportunity to learn about a deeper relationship with our, in our marriages. I have the opportunity to, to interview uh, Pastor David Stevens regarding his new book, Falling Back in Love Again. And I want to remind everybody to please stay on the line and to the end. And he has a special gift just for you. I know that this will be a blessing to each and every one of you. So right now, I want to take this opportunity to introduce Reverend Dr. David R.L. Stevens, author, prophet, man of God, enlightener of many minds, and my pastor. It is a great opportunity to bring him to you today. Dr. Stevens, how are you doing today? I'm fine. I, I didn't expect all those titles, but I'm doing fine. And uh, also, uh, we are friends. Yes, sir. <laughs> In relationship to everything else. I'm doing fine, though. Good to be this here. This is great. This is great. Well, what's going to happen, the format is going to be, I'm going to be asking Dr. Stevens some questions from myself. I'm also going to be asking him a couple of questions that we had that may come up on Facebook. And at the end, we're going to be asking him some questions that have been sent in from our Zoom audience. So right now, Dr. Stevens, would you give a little synopsis on your book, please? Okay, our book is about marital relationships. And what we do is we try to uh, glean from the Word of God the authority on marriage, we try to glean from the word of God some gems that are going to help people in their relationship. And uh, we found out that uh, it works. We've had over 50 years, almost gone on 60 years of marriage bliss based on the word of God. And so I, I'm a living, we are a living testimony that it works. 
Excellent. That's great. We want to, before we start our interview, we want to take this opportunity now to have a word from our sponsor. Here she comes again. Hey, babe, did you do what I asked you to do? What? What now? You said you were going to. Yeah, I got this. I got this. Uh, wait, did you just walk away from me? Okay, we are back with Dr. Stevens in the interview. And my first question is, you talk in your book about uh, a perfect marriage, and then you seem to back away from it. So is there such a thing as a perfect marriage, and what is it? Yes and no. <laughs> no. Um, I think that uh, you can't really say what is a perfect marriage because people are different, and each marriage is different. Uh, but what we ought to be striving for is to be perfectly married. We'll talk more about that a little later on in the, in the program. But um, in terms of a perfect marriage, I don't know uh, if we can hold up an example of a perfect marriage because it's based on human beings. And we know that humans are not perfect. But we, uh, there are some other things that we can learn to do that makes the marriage a solid entity. Mm. You know, I've got a, a question uh, that seems to be coming from our Facebook audience. What should a person do besides seek God and pray if it seems that they're the only one fighting for the marriage? Ah, well, I think you, you've hit the nail on the head. It, it calls for prayer. It calls for uh, being uh, uh, cognizant of what's going on, because a lot of times I find that people are blaming the other person for the imperfection or for the, for the disruption, and really they haven't taken the time to examine themselves. You know, it's easy to point fingers out and say, you did so and so and so and so, but they always taught me that is, as you point out, there are three fingers pointing back, you know? So uh, you have to take, uh, you certainly have to use prayer. And I believe that God will reveal uh, what the solution is to the problem if we consult him. Uh, I also want to say that you have to be open when we pray and ask God to work it out. You got to be open for the answer. A lot of times, uh, a uh, person says, okay, I want you to make him do such and such a thing, or I want you to make her do such and such a thing. And that's easy to do, but uh, how about if you are the problem, if you, have the, if you have the concern, if you are a major contrib contributor to what's going on, uh, are you open? If God reveals it to you, then I think the wise thing is to begin moving according to the will of God. I, I, I know in, in the reading of your book, you talk a little bit about real love. Um, what does real love have to do with the marital relationship success or does it have anything to do with it? <laughs> well, yeah, it has a lot to do with it. Uh, real love is based on many elements, but uh, it, it, it has to be a part of the relationship. And uh, when, one of the things that I like to tell people is uh, you have a gift. You, you have a gift. You have to utilize that gift. And that gift is memory. Something caused you to fall in love at the in the first place. Something, something happened. And it's not just a physical thing, it's also a, a chemical thing. I, I did some research and I found out that uh, when people fall in love, something happens chemically to the body or to the brain, I should say. And uh, you begin uh, uh, moving in a certain direction based on the chemical reaction. And uh, uh, it, it, it's something that is a gift. It's something that's a blessing and you got to utilize the blessing. So uh, when you when you find out that that love, uh, you find out that you fell in love in the first place, 
memory ought to take you back to when you first fell in love and begin to capitalize on those feelings and on that situation that first occurred. Uh, you know, you, you people get married and of course things change. The body changes and, and situations uh, cause us to change. Certainly these things happen, but uh, go back past that to when you fell in love and began uh, rehearsing that thing and began letting that mo motivate you and you'll find out that, that these are the things that start that chemical process uh, going again. But if you concentrate on the, on the little things that don't really mean anything, you start concentrating on those and you start building a case on those, then there's going to be a problem. I mean, come on, people get, uh, especially in, the, in this pandemic now, people find the smallest things and they're, they're really, you know, hey, I, I don't think I love you anymore because you, you keep leaving the cap off the toothpaste and stuff, you know, that, that's a little thing. It makes no difference. It makes no sense. So then you, 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 you just move on and you say, oh, that's not important. I love you in spite of, you see? Uh, we had, before we got on the uh, air today, we, <laughs> we had our television on in our bedroom. Well, the bedroom is right across the hall from where we are and we couldn't find a remote. The television was on, you know? And, and I said, well, we got to have quiet. And so we're, we're going all over, trying to find a remote. We're going in the bed, you know, under the covers and everything, trying to find the remote because we know that the noise is going to be distracting. Now, we could have started blaming each other. Now, who turned the television on the first time? Who, who, what did you do with it? You know, uh, it was a small thing. So how did we solve it? I went downstairs and I got one of the other remotes that at least will turn it on and off, you know, and I turned it off. And so it, the problem was solved, but that's a little thing, but you'd be surprised how many people get involved in a little thing and make it a big thing. And then there's a dilemma in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of that, what we're going to do is, we're getting ready to go to another commercial, but after that, we're going to have a special guest that you particularly have invited. Let's go to the commercial. now back and I see that uh, someone very special has joined us. So would you please take the opportunity to in, uh, introduce us to who you've invited? Oh, it's, it's a delight. This is my queen, Queen Dorothy. Not for a day, but for a lifetime. Uh, she, <laughs> she has been my all in all in this partnership and I love her dearly. And uh, it occurred to me that when we were putting this together, that uh, you know, I'm the one with the big mouth, and I do all the stuff. But Dorothy is the one that goes over my papers and makes sure I'm saying the right thing, and, <laughs> and making sure I'm dotting the eyes and, and crossing the T's and all of that. And so, uh, I it occurred to me that uh, even though uh, I'm looked at as the one who's the mouthpiece, she's the brains, and I have to go. <laughs> I, I need to uh, have her show her face as well. So I'm going to give her an opportunity to just say hello, and then we're going to move on. Hello, everybody. It's delightful to see you, and thank you for being here with us today. God has a lot in store for all of us, including me. And I thank God for all the blessings flowing, and we know 
that you're going to be blessed. Thank you for having me. Con All right. <laughs> oh, that's great, great. It, it is very good to see you. And looking at you both reminds me of a story from Dr. Stevens' book regarding socks. <laughs> Would you mind sharing that story with us? Uh, yeah, we, we always talk about humor being a part of the relationship. And uh, I, I already said, don't take things so seriously, but uh, yeah, the, the socks uh, thing happened. I'm sure my wife has some other stories too, but I'll, I'll venture out in that one since you asked me. Well, we were just newly married and uh, I was a college student uh, finishing up my, my work in college. And so uh, we're married and we're pinching pennies. I mean, I'm sure everybody knows how that, that is. So we, we were pinching pennies and, mm -hmm. and I, I, was in some, I was in the need uh, for some socks. And so I went to one of the bargain stores and uh, I was looking around and they had this bundle of socks and they looked pretty good, you know? So I got the socks uh for a bargain i don't know maybe a dollar or two and uh, there were about six six of them in there yeah. and so <laughs> i took the uh the next morning i took a pair out and i put my foot in the sock well i tried to put my foot in the sock there was a seam sewn across the thing and so i you know i'm i'm trying to I'm probably trying to go to go to class or something you know so i i said well that, that won't work i went and got another pair out of the bundle it had a seam sewn across sewn across too and so uh we have laughed and laughed over the years about those socks trying to save money trying to trying to be a a, a bargain shopper uh but yet uh my money was wasted, but the intention was good. Uh, yes, I, I can remember many stories like that. But I seem to have another question that's come from the audience. And it said, should you put your money together in a marriage or have separate accounts? Ah, now that's, that's a good one. Well, look, I'll, I'll give you my, uh, our personal story. We have a joint account. And I operate out of that joint account. She has a separate single account. Okay, uh, that that works, you know. Uh, but we pay the bills together, and uh, you know, if if there's a bill that's outstanding and I think I need to bring it to her attention, I say, uh, Dot, uh, I'm about to pay the X Y Z bill and it's uh whatever the amount is and we pay the uh you know if if you have a separate account um i can get into her account you know i don't usually i don't unless she ask me to, to do something uh but it's not a secret why because we are married and we do things together uh, it's just more convenient for her that she has some expenses that she pays out of her account. Uh, you know, as I said, I don't have a separate account. I got them all, you know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we, true. but we work together. Um, I, I, I hope that answers the question. If not, you could, you could reiterate. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's, that's a good thing. I think what I'm hearing from you is that it, it really is something, as you were saying that that every marriage is kind of unique unto itself. Yeah. That they're not all alike. That every there's difference in every one. And some marriages, it works out to have you know a joint bank account uh, where everybody pays everything. Some marriages, that's a fiasco. Um, so I've seen it going both ways. It's about working out a happy medium through conversations and be, and knowing each other. Um, that's what it sounds a little bit like. Yeah, and, and there are times when we've had a big bill uh, and it, it was my responsibility to pay the big bill and I didn't have all the money to do it. Uh, I go and I say, Dot, uh, so-and-so, uh, such and such is due. Um, can you help me? And she says, sure, you know, and, and we work it out. And uh, there are other times when uh, I, I, I remember recently uh, I went to the drugstore to pick up one of her prescriptions 
and uh, I just paid it out of the, the account. You know, I didn't have to call up and say, you know, uh, send me your, your bank information so I could pay for your med that We work together and it has worked marvelously for us over all these years. And, and, as, and I can see it has. Um, uh, but, you know, that saying that question pops, another question pops into mind that you've said many times in your writings that couples should not be concerned about having a perfect marriage, but more make more effort in being perfectly married. Is this double talk or is there something deeper to that statement? No, I, I put it in there so I can make a question in people's mind. What is he, is he, <laughs> is he running over himself? No, but that's actually what I mean. Uh, you have to develop the thought in mind that God gave me this individual. This is God's design. And so God knows far more than I know. And so I must accept the will of God and I must work uh, along with this joining of, of the husband and wife. I, I must come to the conclusion that I have what I have. Uh, and if you don't do that, you're opening the door to uh, Satan's territory uh, because he's sure to bring somebody else in the situation. I call him a gap filler. You know, don't allow there to be a gap in your relationship because uh, the gap filler comes in and they just look like they're just going to supply all your whatever is missing in your relationship. And so your mind starts to wander and you start, start thinking, oh, maybe I should, uh, maybe, maybe I should uh, develop a relationship with uh, this person. I'm saying to you, no, no, no. Develop the mindset that this is the person that God gave me. Uh, no one else can fill that relationship, can fill that, that responsibility but this person. And I'm going to do everything that I can to, to make this work. Everything that I can. I, I talk to people, I counsel people, and they tell me, oh, yeah, I'm doing everything I know to do. And then I, all I got to do is take time and ask the other spouse, is that true? Uh, do you have some examples? And they're, they're, <laughs> they got plenty of examples where they tell me, yeah, well, they didn't do this and they didn't do that and they don't do this and they don't do the other. And so, uh, again, it's your personal responsibility to be married to the person that you're married to. Mm. Don't look out over the fence or under the fence or anywhere else to get the gap filler to come in. Because guess what? I've seen people who went for the gap filler and that doesn't last too long and they're looking for another gap filler mm -hmm. and another gap filler. Mm -hmm. Listen, concentrate on the one that God gave you. Uh, they're not perfect? Oh. So what? You aren't either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very. That's a very good point. You know, another question came about about what would you say to a, a newly wed a newly wedded couple that seems to always be in disagreement with some of the things that's going on in the marriage. All right. Well, <laughs> I think you can disagree without being disagreeable. Mm. You know, as close as Dorothy and I. Uh, am uh, to other people they look at and they say, oh man, they sen they finish each other's sentences and all that <laughs> <laughs> stuff, you know. Uh, that might be true sometimes, but we differ. And we differ, but we don't fight. We don't fuss. We don't argue over it. Sometimes we, we, we say, well, I don't really agree with you. Uh, listen, uh, let, let's table that and pray about it and come back. Uh, I have a funny story. I don't know if you remember this. One of our children, I won't mention which one, but um, we we were discussing something in our room one one day, and and uh, 
we just didn't agree. And I said, Dorothy, I don't agree with you. I just don't agree with you. And the kids started crying, breaking Oh, mom and dad are having a fuss and they're going to they gonna get a divorce. And I'm going, what is wrong it's with bad you? Ice cream. Uh, it was about ice cream. It was about ice cream. No, he was running to that truck. Oh, 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 yeah. And that was another, that was another the story. But, 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 um, because he had never seen us actually disagree uh when i when i proclaimed that i disagreed with her uh he thought we were arguing well, we, weren't <laughs> arguing. we just had a difference of opinion uh the one she wants me to tell you about is um uh one of our children again i will not uh tell you which one but uh those of you who are very close to this child will know who i'm talking about um, very independent. Uh, we taught our children about Pavlov's, Pavlov's dog. And uh, we said that the scientists uh, took a little bell and uh, rang the bell and then he would stuff meat pow uh, powder into the dog's mouth. So the dog began to associate the ringing of the bell with um, uh, with time to salivate and, and time to eat. So uh, the theory that, that he came up with was used by the commercial industry. And so the Mr. S uh, is it Mr. Softy? Yeah, so, yeah, I think. Yeah. Anyway, the ice cream truck, you know, they come down, doo -doo 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 -doo, whatever they play. And the kids come running because they've been preconditioned to know that's the ice cream truck, <laughs> you know? So we taught our children listen, you are not going to be trained by outside forces. You make up your mind to do what you're going to do and don't be preconditioned to buying stuff because somebody rang a bell or played a song or whatever. <laughs> so one day in the summertime, the Mr. Softy truck came down our street and they were playing the, the, the thing. And this kid runs past us, blah, 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 tore out the doors and went out. And I thought, that can't be a Stevens. You know, <laughs> we trained them differently. So we we gone, what have we, where did we go wrong in training this child? So a uh, couple minutes later, the child came back empty handed saying, hmm, that, that, that man must think I'm crazy. I'm not paying those prices. So we said, well, he's a Steven. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, but back to the point, we are different people. Mm -hmm. um, you are different from your spouse. And so what you need to do is embrace the differences, not allow the differences to separate you. I am glad that my wife doesn't agree with me on everything. She's the softest side of Rev. <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, uh, if, if, if Rev exercised uh, what he was feeling, you, you know, it might be a little, uh, uh, well, a little sting in it, you know, but Sister Stephen says, you know, uh, you know, let's let, let's talk about it. Let's go along with it. So she's the softer side. And then in the long run, I am glad that I listened to her and I didn't uh, re react or respond the way that I was going to do it. Thank mm. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, two, two questions came and I'm going to combine them because I think they're both related. One question was, how do you rekindle a relate how do you rekindle i guess that fire their relationship but another question came in is how do you rebuild trust so i want to combine the both of them together how do you rekindle a relationship where the trust is broken uh now that's that's a deep one uh i think uh i think after praying about it and submitting ourselves to god uh, we, we just got to go ahead and, and, and trust that God will work it out. Now, mm. a lot of times people make a mistake and they do something and uh, they don't intentionally uh, want to break the mold, but they, they do something and then the other partner is hurt 
and uh, they come back and they say, oh, I'm so sorry, I, I didn't mean to do that. I think you have to give them a chance. You can't presuppose that, uh, oh, you're just saying that because you you want what you want, but uh, no, I, I'm, no, uh-uh, I'm, I'm done, you know? Uh, come on, we're human. I don't think, I have met a lot of people in my life, I haven't met everybody, but I've met an awful lot of people. I don't think that you uh, have done everything right in your life up to now. Mm. You know, I don't think that. All of us have made mistakes. You know, uh, the Bible teaches us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us have, have had to be redeemed, yes. you know? And so I think we have to give people a chance to redeem themselves. Yeah, it hurts sometimes. You mm. know, we do some things, uh, you, you know, uh, you, you don't maybe intentionally do something, but you did something and it was accidentally hurtful to the spouse. So what happens, the spouse says, well, you know, uh, you, you hurt me, but let me tell you something. Don't carry a hurt for 80 years. I mean, mm -hmm. come on, you know, uh, think about the fact that you have done stuff and God has get forgiven you, you know, uh, and you didn't, you turned around and did it the next day, you know, and God mm -hmm. has forgiven you, you know, so uh, I'm not giving license for going out and doing stuff, but I'm just saying, you know, be understanding that we are human beings. We, uh, we, we don't always do things perfectly, you know? Um, uh, well, I forgot the second part of your, your question. Well, you, you said it, because it's, it's about rekindling a relationship where trust is broken. And I think that's what you've been talking about, the, if I'm hearing you right, where you really got to have to give a lot to God. If God has said that that's the person for you, then you are to be, be de dedicated in trying to rebuild that trust, even though you've been hurt by them. That's what I'm hearing from you. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. So I, I was thinking, um, if you believe that God will take care of it, then you trust him. And if you believe, then you will receive it. Mm. But if you don't mm. believe, it'll show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's very true. It's very true. You know, um, one time I um, had the opportunity to marry a friend of mine, and um, and you know, I well, before I married anybody, I always interview him, even though he's a friend of mine. I really didn't know he was who was married. And I'm interviewing them, and I'm just getting a sense of uh, this marriage. I just don't see it going anywhere. I see it breaking. But he's my buddy. I got to marry him. He's my buddy. I know. I don't. So I married him, and it wound up being a fiasco. Um, what would you say about circumstances such as that? Well, you know, we do the best that we can do. That, that's, <laughs> we, we try to discern, we try to uh, counsel, we, but we do the best that we can do. But sometimes uh, it's beyond uh, our scope. Many times it's beyond our scope. And so we don't know. So um, you, you can't, you know, I think the best thing that we can say is I did my best. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm not responsible. I, I gave the advice or the counsel. There are sometimes you see people, they, you just, that's not going to work. How in the world? Well, you talk to them, you tell them, but then you, you they make the decision. I mean, you might even say, I'm not going to be a part of this relationship. I'm not going to solemnize this, uh, this uh, uh, union. And they say, well, thank you, Pastor. And they go get somebody else <laughs> to do it. But it's, yeah. you are res my responsibility is to, is to embrace truth mm -hmm. and uh, to, to teach as best I can the truth. Uh, and if people decide that, you know, hey, I'm not listening to you, <laughs> you know, I, uh, man, the love bug is, is bugging, you know, the juices, the juices are flowing, and I'm going to do what I'm going to do, 
Yes. Well, okay, you know that happens a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know that the, what what can you do? Uh, then the, those same people are gonna come. Oh, Rev, I wish I had listened to you. <laughs> I wish I. <laughs> well, at that point, you just say. Mm. God bless you. Let's, let's hope that uh, we can get a better tomorrow than today. But I, I want to I wanted to also make this point. Uh, um, the Bible gives us three elements um, that make a relationship. Uh, it says that a man shall leave his father and his mother, cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And uh, those are the three elements that, that put marriage in the God context. That, that's what it's supposed to be. Um, leaving home, you got to leave home. If you got, uh, and I'm going to say this to, to, to the young ladies out there who may be single, if you got a man who refuses to leave home, and, that, and when I'm talking about leave home, I don't mean uh, physical Thing. I mean, his whole thing is wrapped around his family and he's got to go to his mama or his daddy to ask permission mm -hmm. to do something and something. And, and when it relates to you, uh, he's not ready yet. I, I don't say he's not good material. I'm just saying he's not ready yet. Mm -hmm. A man must leave his father and his mother. OK, that means leave their influence, leave uh, their direct influence. Let me put it that way. Um, and then uh, he must cleave. Cleave is the love element that, that we've been talking about. That, that's I love you. And you might say, why do you? I love you because I love you. There is nothing else I can say. I love you because I love you. And when I love you, I'm going to do everything I can do to show you that I love you. I'm going to pay your bills. I'm going <laughs> I'm going to wash your clothes. I'm going to cook your meals. I'm going to do everything that that is required of me to do to to reinforce that love. And then the one flesh element is also very very important. So important <clears throat> that um, during the marriage ceremony um, you come to this thing where they talk about kiss you may kiss your bride well do you realize that that is representing the intimacy that is 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 joining of the of the flesh joining of the body so i ask people please don't laugh you know i, I remember uh back in the day people ooh, ooh, like you never saw people kiss each other but it, it's more than the than the kiss that the two people are engaged in, it represents the one flesh relationship. And so that's got to be there as well. Mm. Mm. Well, all this has been great. Um, I wanna take this time to go to another uh, commercial. And uh, during that, I want people to ask questions. If you have questions in your mind and your heart, please put them in the chat so we can see what your questions are. And we'll ask the Dr. Stevens and Dorothy Stevens. Let's go for our next commercial. Uh, back. I hope you got had you had your dancing shoes on because that was a great commercial to dance to. And now, Pastor, I have a very deep question, and it doesn't come from me. It comes from the audience. Very deep. I couldn't answer it, so I have to go to the man who can answer it. 
And the question okay. is, why aren't more husbands taught how to treat their wives right or taught how to treat women, period? All right, that is a deep question. <clears throat> I, well, I can't really answer why most men or why some men, I, I'd rather say some men than most men. Uh, I think that it's the responsibility of the, uh, of the church leaders, especially the pastor. I, I think it's their responsibility to teach on every level teach men how to be men, teach uh, women how to be women uh, and ladies, and, and ladies. Uh, teach them all of the elements that are, that are needed. Uh, you know, a guy who is, well, let me, let me go back to the earlier premise. I was saying we're different. You know, men don't think like women. <laughs> Okay, I, I know we got a group A man going on that. And, and guess what? Women don't think like men. Now, uh, it, it, it's, it takes some study. It takes some praying. It takes some determination to, to begin to understand. I, I understand a lot about ladies and about women. I understand why, how. Well, I prayed a lot and I studied a lot. I prayed and I studied and then I observed. And so I'm, I'm so, sort of able to communicate with ladies about some of the, some of the problems that they have uh, related to, to, uh, to males. Uh, in my book, uh, Falling Back in Love, uh, again, I, I devote a whole chapter to uh, what men uh, wish their wives knew and, uh, and also a chapter on, on what women uh, wish that their husbands knew. And so uh, it, it's a shame that in our culture, we haven't spent more time trying to develop uh, the understanding of, of, the, of the male and the female in, in relationship. But guess what? God created male and female, okay? Now, was that a mistake or was that a design? I, I believe it was a design. So if he created males with a male thinking and females with a female thinking, he planned for it to work. We just got to take the time and the concentration to make it work. Uh, it, it takes time to understand. Um, we don't, we don't often talk alike or speak alike. We got different languages based on our understanding, based on our feelings. Uh, women tend to feel more things, you know, they, they're feeling, I don't feel that it's right. Okay. Men are more into the cerebral uh, element. Well, you know, they, well, it makes sense to me or it doesn't make <laughs> sense to me. And I don't think that this is, you know, uh, it, it's, it's both. <laughs> it's both uh, feeling and intellect, you know? Uh, don't put your, your spouse down because they don't feel or they don't think just like you. It, it's coming together, trying to make uh, harmony in the situation, knowing that God put both of you together. I think that's the, that's the premise you got to work off. God gave me this woman. God mm. gave me this man. And because he gave me, I'm going to do everything I can to be suitable for him or mm. for her. Uh, it's, it, it's the will. Mm, that's probably, you know, a, a quick question came across that uh, I know it, it, the Bible talks about men leaving and mother and father and cleaving to their wife. Does, should a woman have that same type of mentality? Uh, I'm sorry, I was reading and, and give, give it to me again. <laughs> All right, the Bible talks about men leaving mother and father and cleaving to his wife. Oh. Should a woman have that same type of mentality? Yeah, it, it's, not, it's not gender. Okay, we, we, 
we quote it as gender and man shall leave his father and mother, but, but it's, it's, it's across the genders. It's both a woman has to leave her father and her mother. Uh, most of the time it's, it's not done as much now, but uh, back in the day during a wedding, you saw that the father walked the bride up to the, to the altar Mm -hmm. And then there was an exchange. Uh, sometimes the man would come down and uh, the father would put her arm in, into the arm of the, uh, uh, the intended husband and uh, he would take her off. Well, that's, that's, a, uh, that's an example of, of the leaving aspect. A, a woman leaving her father and her mother, that doesn't mean she doesn't love them. That doesn't mean that she doesn't regard them. That doesn't mean that she can't call them and say, uh, look, I'm trying to make fried rice. Uh, you know, what, what is the recipe that, that, that you, uh, you use? Or uh, I need some advice. <clears throat> My husband is, is uh, not sleeping well. And, and uh, I think maybe it's something that I'm doing that's annoying him. What do you, okay. So that advice can be given but then you have to you have to weigh it, and you have to say, uh, if the wife, I mean, if the mother says to you, "Uh, huh, I had that problem too. I moved out and went to the next room," <laughs> you know, <laughs> then you you have to say, "Well, hmm, is that good advice for our relationship, or and maybe that worked for my mother and my father?" But uh, I I need to stand aside of that uh, counsel and see if it fits our situation. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that that has to be done. Um, another question, uh, particularly for someone who's ministering, um, how do you balance ministry with your marriage relationship if your spouse is not as dedicated to the ministry as you are? Mm. That's serious. That's serious because I think that... Um, God has called you to ministry, but I I, I joined a um, uh, a group in writing a book that's supposed to come out I think in February. Or so I I don't even remember what the title is. It's several of us writing, but I wrote a, a chapter that called that's called Family First, and I believe, uh, and I got ministers listening to me. I believe that your family comes first before anything else. I believe that God called you to the ministry, but your ministry has to be in the confines of the family. You can't go uh, out in ministry and neglect your family. Mm -hmm. I know that's not gonna make me real popular, <laughs> but uh, your family is your first obligation. No, yeah. uh, my, I can't spend time. I, I got to spend, spend time in the word. I, 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 I got to study the word. I, yeah, you want me to sit up and watch television with you and hug you and hold your hand. And I, I, I just got to go study uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You know, uh, it doesn't work that way. Your first obligation is to your family. Now, you, I, I, I think that you, you need to sit down. You need to talk. You need to come to an understanding that, listen, there are there is some time that I have to get alone with the word. There is some time that I have to I have to uh, study just where to go and how to go. And uh, I'll give you your time. I'll give you your space. I'll do uh, the, you're you're my mate. I love you. I will do what I'm supposed to do. But at this particular time, give me the opportunity to hear from God, you know? Uh, I may not be able to, <laughs> now I'm a leader. <laughs> I'm gonna quit there <laughs> before I get in real trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you the doctor. <laughs> uh, but you know, an another question came up um, and I kind of want to retool the question because the, the question says, you know, how can I identify that a person that I'm dating is the right one to marry. And I think the question should be, can you identify some tools that helps that person to realize that may be the right person to marry? 
Yeah, and I'm I'm sorry I didn't didn't read it. In one of my books, I I specified for singles and how to uh, to set out a pattern of dating, um, and, and what to look for. And I'm not as as <laughs> I'm not as aware. You know, you you write stuff, and then you, you it was a while ago, and I don't remember. But uh, just just off the cuff there are some things that you need to look for. You need to look for the temperament of the person. That is, that is key, that is very crucial. You need to look and uh, you need to see how this person responds uh, in, in many different situations. Don't just fall in love because they are saying nice things to you or they bring you flowers and, and, uh, and remember your birthday and stuff, you know. Uh, look at it from the standpoint of lifetime. Is this person going to be, I, you want somebody, I would think you want somebody with an even temperament, not a temperament that, that uh, flies off the handle, not a temperament that just makes them a, a disrag. You know, it, it's something in between. It, it's, it's how do they respond? Uh, are they kind? I wrote a chapter in this book that uh, says kindness counts. And I spell counts with a, with a K just to get people interested in looking at the, at the chapter. But, but, you know, is a person kind? Uh, is a person selfish? Is a person giving? If they don't give you, if they're stingy and, and, uh, and, Unre well, just stingy. Don't expect that you marry them and suddenly they're going to be a great gift giver. It, it doesn't happen that way. A person is likely to be how they're going to be all the time. You just got to look for it. Uh, love is wonderful. Love is wonderful. I, 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 I can't endorse it enough. I fell in love with this girl beside me. And I tell you, there, there was no going back. Uh, people, people even ask me if I believe in love at first sight. I, I'm very cautious about that one because, uh, yeah, but it, to us, it happened. I saw her and um, I, I ran across campus when I saw, I met her on campus, I ran across campus and told one of my friends, I just met my wife, <laughs> you know, uh, but I don't endorse that because I say you got to take more than just one look, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you got to, you got to examine the person's temperament. You got to see the kind of habits that they have. Um, it, yeah, it takes a lot uh, for single people. I, I, I really wish I could tell you which book that's in and then tell you what chapter but um you know we're gonna do this conference again in march mm -hmm. so uh maybe we'll we'll have some more preparation for single people as well yes you know i i i found that um through my experience that i've seen a lot of times that um, a girl or a young woman or a man will say, hey, look, that woman or man is good for me. I can, I can change them into what I want them to be, uh, um, uh -huh. which is, which is, which is, we find out as a walking landmine. What would you say to something like that? Yeah, don't, don't marry with the, with the expectation that you're going to change somebody. Um, that, that's a mistake on the way to happening. Uh, you don't change. People do change now, uh, but the, you know you don't try to marry somebody and say I'm gonna change them, uh, and they're gonna be just like what I need. You know, mm -hmm. you you better look a little a little deeper than that. Don't even mm. try it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go to our final commercial right now, and then we'll be back with David and Dorothy Stevens. Okay. 
Okay, we are back. I want to remind people to please make sure they are on mute um, because we don't want to miss this great time. Um, I have appreciated this time of interviewing Dr. Stevens. And as he has said, we will be doing this again because there's much, much more to deeper and better relationships. And I am learning. And my wife is over here saying, I have a lot to learn. <laughs> um, so um, I, you know, and, and I fell in love with her at first sight, just took a while to get married to her. Um, <laughs> but this, this has been a great opportunity. Um, I want to thank uh, Sister Tracy because she is the one that has put all this together. I think she's done an excellent job. Um, and so I hope you will appreciate her for what she's done. Uh, Brother Fred Cohen, he is a great, uh, he's done a great job also. Uh, Pastor Vera Odom, she is also involved in this. So I want to make sure everybody gets, gets them their accolades because, you know, they're worthy of praise. They're wor they have Amen. not been hired, but they're worthy of praise. Amen. Um, Amen. So at this time, I want to turn this over to Dr. Stevens and Dorothy Stevens to close this out. It's been great. God bless you. Oh, God bless you. I, I've enjoyed the time. And as we said, we plan to do this in March again. Uh, I think it's the third week in March, and I don't have the exact date. Um, but we uh, encourage you to, to listen out. We have your, your email address, and so we'll be uh, giving you that information. Uh, also, we want to say to you um, that... Um, this information, the whole book is on audio book. And so you can listen to it and you can do uh, your work and, and uh, it's illustrated. I'm not even gonna tell you who the, the person is illustrating, it's not me, um, but it's a wonderful, wonderful adaptation uh, that you will love. And um, it's also an ebook. It's also, um, of course, on paper, in paperback, and uh, you can even get it in hardback. I don't know if anybody buys hardback copies anymore. <laughs> but anyway, uh, go to our website, uh, soundmarriages.com, and you will find www.soundmarriages.com, and you will find a host of things there that are related that uh, you can avail yourselves of. Uh, again, thank you, everybody who's been here. We hope that you are able to spread the word and look for our next time. And listen, hang on in there, pray, and hang on in there. Don't give up. Even though you're seeing maybe some things that, that you uh, haven't seen before in, in your relationship, but don't give up because uh, uh, God has put you together. Uh, work on it. Please. Excuse me, Dr. Dr. Stevens, about the free gift. I want to remind you of the free gift everybody gets. Yes, everybody's going to get a free gift. Uh, we're going to start sending them out as soon as uh, the broadcast is over. Okay, I guess we'll close out. God bless you all. Would you like to say a quick prayer for us? Father, we do thank you. We thank you for the privilege of gathering this evening. Oh, God, we thank yes, you for Lord. the opportunity thank to speak you. truth and to speak blessings Hallelujah. into the life of the audience. Yes. Now we pray, Lord, that these gems of wisdom would enter into the consciousness of people and thank that they you. would uh, make up in their minds that they will be warriors for Christ, yes, that they Jesus. will do everything that they can do Lord. to make sure that their marriage is pleasing to God. Thank and you. we thank you. Thank you. And we give you praise in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Amen.